and uh, this is when we'll come, we can share stories of something interesting you find. Uh, but we'll start off with trying to upload things from the app. If you've collected things on Mapillary or GoMap or yeah, one road to get it uploaded or saved. Uh, and all of this goes to one, the same map uh, database so that we all can see it and we'll be able to see the changes live here. So as we're doing this. Uh, so open up your apps if you've not saved or uploaded already. It's a good time to try it out. Uh, it might ask you for a login or to sign up on OpenStreetMap. So you need to do those mechanics. And if you're stuck with anything, you can ask uh, Sanjay, me, Sajad, Willy. I'm the worst person because I forgot my OSM password. <laughs> And in the meantime, we also have a small paper map here. Uh, those who didn't have things on a phone can always put your observation on this. And you'll see how to get that also. Digitized. So I know exactly where and if anyone has uploaded, uh, it might show up here on screen. So this is what uh, folks have already uploaded from around. So whatever we were adding will show up here. It should show up here in a few minutes. I mean it may also not show up because there's so many edits. This is like all global edits happening. Uh, this is uh, only on this. Oh, it's on. Oh, URL patterns. Oh, yeah. Give a beep box in the URL. Wait, what? Really? Ah, across the map. You have to look at the map. Yeah, this is someone here only. Geohackers. Geohackers has map trees. It's like comments. Comments are coming on screen. Much wider. But that is just my. I did a tree. Yeah, yeah, we added for lots of trees. Was it a real tree? Yeah. Why did I not add a real tree? No, it uh, wasn't test data. No, no, it was. Uh, it should also have uh, the species as a second. Show me the way. So we did a lot of coconut trees, mango trees, uh, water palms, street lights. Magnifera indica. Species. I did. <laughs> wow. Um, what else can we do, Tara? So, anyone? Issues with uploading, uh, saving from the app? Yes. I have a question. Yes. So, I like There's a few reasons. I'm here most of the day around in Anjana. Uh, we have a great team of experts also visiting and staying around here. Uh, and one of the experts owns a bakery. Well, I know. Yeah, I have Adi Rani. So we have the space as well. The convenient location. Yeah. Space is easy to organize. And incidentally, it's a great location to also explore. So it turned out well. And in the meantime, uh, Where's the north side access in this? So there's another Should we put them? Yeah, yeah. Just 
For anyone curious what happens to mapillary, uh, so all the images go into one single repository of uh, geotagged images uh, with all kinds of metadata extracted and also with image segmentation and feature extraction and there's an open database of that. So it doesn't go into OpenStreetMap, it goes into a separate database, although all the data is open. It's under an open license, so it can be used for OpenStreetMap purposes as well. The, Finally, you can explore your images like this, just like Google Street View does. But this is this is completely crowdsourced, so we can all do it for some place. Yeah. And it's a great place to document or archive changes in a place over time. Uh, because one of the big issues with uh, videos and uh, images is to archive them in a systematic way. So whenever citizen activists are trying to take a photo of a tree, now they just have a photo and some folder. But when you put it up here, it's geotagged to that one location, one database. If somebody else take a, takes a photo later on, you have a photo of the same tree in the same location. And it's a very nice digital archive uh, and documentation of the trees. This is video or photo? These are photos. Multiple photos. This is uh, what your phone can do. So just taking photos in sequence and it gets processed and stitched together like this. So I have a question about this. So say someone wants to file a lawsuit about this, like this so and so tree has been cut and you know, in an illegal way or whatever. Can they have they ever used this data as evidence in a court or stuff like that? Do you know? Anyone has used it? Yeah. So this is as good as taking an image. Right. You have an easy to find image of a location. Right. And the timestamp will probably hold up. Right. Yeah. 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 Up. Like I know, sat like Google satellite imagery now gets used quite a lot. Yeah. Like that. Activists are using it in Goa also. Yeah, Google yeah, satellite. Yeah, yeah. Google gets Google gets used a lot for, for that sort of stuff. How do you find this picture? Go to uh, location. To see this, you have to go to mapillary.org. Or also on the app on your phone, you can explore capture around. Okay. It takes, uh, since it's quite bulky to upload the photos, it might be 200, 300 MB, and it takes around half an hour, one hour for them to process and show up. So you may not be able to see it right away, okay. but later in the evening you should be able to see it. Uh, in the meantime, anyone having issues with uploading data, creating OpenStreetMap account, any tech uh, issues with the app? And uh, all of the data that everyone's uploaded to OpenStreetMap comes into one single database. Now this database is uh, open source and openly licensed data. As soon as we put it on, does it show up on OpenStreetMap? Yeah. So uh, the OpenStreetMap website is osm.org. Uh, it's tech, like the website wise it's still 20 years behind. So it may not work great on the phone. Uh, so if you search for Anjana, you should go to Anjana here. And on top, you, just like Wikipedia, you'll see a few tabs saying edit, history. And uh, if I click history, it should uh, show me all the changes that's happened in this part of the map. If there are multiple taggings on a particular building of different taggings, say somebody saying it's a complex, somebody saying it's a red zone, then all the taggings will come together? Or will it show how will they prioritize what exactly is that? Conflicts, conflicts. Yeah, you will have a conflict if it's the same kind of tag. If two people, it depends on who's editing it last. But if you're editing at the same time, which possibly what can happen here in a situation where two people have gone the same road and have marked it differently and are trying to upload it, then you'll get some kind of conflict in your app. If anyone faces that, do let us know immediately. We'll figure out how to resolve that. Most recent one, yeah. There's no validation. 
Yeah, it's community validator. Just like how the community create the map, uh, it's you seeing somebody has marked a road wrong, and then fixing it and correcting it on this. So there's also a few tools, and actually Willie, who's with us, has written one of the like more popular validation tools for OSM. So there's this thing called OSMChart.org. There's also a few others, which like this will you know, and there's people says you know some people who enjoy mapping, there's some people who enjoy validating. So there's people. Like we, you know, people will be checking Wikipedia edits. Like if you try editing a popular Wikipedia page, it's going to be reverted soon enough. And depending on the area, but similar here, right? That's the idea. That there's a few tools where people can validate that will give you, you know, nice ways to see the old version, new version, you know, things like that. There's a few mechanisms, community mechanisms around. If I edit anything, it will always go through validation. No, so they are like Wikipedia, right? Your changes show up immediately, but it will kind of and then depending, there's a few, like, you know, OSM chart, for example, tries to add some flags. Like, it's something obvious, like someone's written some abusive thing or something, it'll, like, flag it immediately. It'll try and use some algorithms to kind of flag things. But otherwise, you know, people, there's people who review their area regularly, see the changes happening, they know their area. Does this enter as input into Google? No. So Google has been caught stealing from OpenStreetMap or people have tried to this thing but so the OpenStreetMap license is so I know it's a bit complicated but it's a GPL style license so if you use OpenStreetMap data along with your own data you have to make your data open as well and Google does not want to make its data open so it doesn't use OpenStreetMap data I think it's a little complicated what exactly yeah. that means yeah. all of that obviously in some people this thing but that's the basic it's got a GPL style license right. so anybody can download the data from Google website yes. and yes. use it for whatever yes. yeah, commercial non-commercial it's fine as long as you share like the data exactly. yeah. so if you make modifications to the data you're bound by the license to share those modifications back so if you download it and then you know you you improve it or this and that in your own data set, that's fine. But then you you're obligated to share those changes back by the terms of the license. Yeah. Is there anyone here who uses Strava? Strava. So uh, Strava is one place where you would have seen the maps used in Strava is not from Google Maps. It's an open street Yeah. Uh, it's it's from open street map. So trails that you've added today will show up in Strava in a week. So any trails, any roads, water bodies, anything that you see on the map. If you edit open Shiva, it comes into Strava map. What's Strava? Strava is a very popular uh, fitness app to track uh, your... It started out to track cycling, I think. Oh. Now running, cycling, whatever. Hiking, you do. Yeah. So does it ever take data from Strava? Like say I go on a ride and I end up going on a new trail or something and it ends up being hard to... There's nothing on the map. Yeah, so not so it I know pull when, back from Strava. So right? I know when there are so I know when we were working at Mapbox for example, uh, we did have Strava was sharing some of their data back with us and we were trying to use that to map. Uh, I don't know if it's still happening or in any formal way. Yeah. I don't think it's automatically happening. No. There may be some mapping teams. I think Strava shares its data in some anonymized way that then is sometimes but it's not guaranteed to get out. But you, but you can add it, no? Yeah, yeah now you know. That now you know how it I went on a new trail So this is my pastime. I end up mapping a lot of uh, wetlands and the forest areas. So a lot of the green patches you see in Goa and Strava maps was drawn by me. I'll do it too. All trails also used. All trails are also used. So Maps.me also. Maps.me is open. So most... Uh, Outdoor maps would be open street maps because the community is very active in a lot of off-road things like cycling, running, kayaking. Yeah. I mean, it's all up to us. Like the whole idea was to bring people together who's interested, who would find this fun, right? And uh, we have been doing it in different parts of the world in our own ways. So is there an app you can use on your phone that uses this data but renders it in like an application, like a Google Maps for OpenStreetMaps? There's plenty. Uh, that's one of the issues with an open source thing. There's so many options and each one does something different. Right. Uh, 
so depending on exactly what you would need there is uh, application for that what is the tool to create say village level maps whole village level So you can do it in variety of ways. Uh, so even right from OpenStreetMap, you can look at this for like a closer look. So this yeah. is right from OpenStreetMap. It's run a live query and told me, give me all the neighborhood, give me the boundary of Anjana Village, show me all the neighborhoods within the village, all the wados, uh, and the location of the police station, the health center, uh, and this is queried live. So if you if something is incorrect, you can correct in OpenStreetMap. And this would be updated. You write code to get this. Uh, any code that was written is right here. Okay. You have to write it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very simple thing. But uh, I mean, there's a wizard, so you can also just type what you're looking for and be good. Yeah. Also, ChatGPT is really good at coming up with that. I see. Code. So you can ask for stuff like, can you write the overpass query for finding cafes in an area, and then just paste that. I see. It should do that for you. Works 95%. So, a map view like this doesn't exist on Google Maps. It will not be able to get, oh, show me a boundary of Anjana village, show me the health center. It will show you all the cafes, restaurants, a whole bunch of things that you don't want to see. How is this boundary taken? This was manually added by us. So, uh, I think Anthony, there was a bunch of us who have been interested in data for the village. And uh, yeah, we imported that section of the boundary using the regional plan yeah. by the boundary. Yeah. So how do you draw lines? We use the regional plan from the government overlaid it in the same place. You know, no, on the on the app. So that wasn't done through the phone. Okay. There's separate software that can help you. But do you need like? Previous images with the latest one. No. 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 Okay. It wants you. you. Find different pictures from the same. Yeah, you can find different pictures from the same location if someone from has different time periods? from different time periods from anybody who is uploaded. So if I use the app to see things, I can choose which version. To yeah. Choose? Yeah. You get a temporal record of that location. If there's multiple people doing it over time. And the nice thing is, processing this data is very computationally expensive. So Meta has taken over this project. They have their own interest in doing it, but they have promised it will be free, and the data will be open uh, as it was, and will be available for use in OpenStreetMap project, uh, just like before. So that will not change. OpenStreetMap, like straight view thing, the Mapillary thing, you can get it on Mapillary.org. Yes, and we can see the Mapillary images on OpenStreetMap. Uh, so we can see how to do that for. Uh, but first, anyone having issues with uploading, who's ever been able to get their data uploaded? Can we check if it's there in the open system? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, would it be a nice way to check? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Yes. Yeah, I have a question. Can you map these around points that were lined? Yeah. 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 But uh, the, depending on the, the phone apps, Go Map does it, few apps do it. But on the desktop, you can do anything. So, no, I meant like, if I was walking, like, the boundary of the city, like, how would I map that without like, one of you guys say, sorry, right? I didn't say that I'm just saying that that's exactly the boundary of the city. Yeah, yeah. So, if I walk along the fence, it's going to make me the back. Alex, back Yeah. So, you need to record your trail, whatever you're walking on. And later, you'll see it on the Saturday image and then you use that as a reference to we will we'll show how to do that uh, on, uh, on iPhone there's something on, on Android there's GPS tracker it's an app so it's like a voice recorder when you just turn it on it'll keep recording your location as you're moving on iPhone also I think there's GPS tracker but just search for GPS tracker and then you can download that as a like a line you can use then, it. You can use Strava for it. Too. Wow. You can use Strava. You see it on the Strava map. You can overlay that map on this. But all the all these trackers show you on the map, so yeah. you have the context. Right. Anyway, yeah. So you can and that's replicate that. Yeah. So it, it, just like how you download an image, you can download the that file, which usually 
Like there are formats like KML and all that. And then you can drag and drop it to the browser editor. Yeah, we'll do a small demo later. We'll hands on, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Guys, just FYI, pizzas, some pizzas are coming in like 10, 10 minutes or so. That's what that is. Okay, uh, it seems like there's quite a few people new to OpenStreetMap, so maybe good to have some intro of like the technicalities of OpenStreetMap. Would you be interested in that? Yes. Yes, yeah? yes. Uh, OpenStreetMap is around 20 years old as a project. Somewhere a little after Wikipedia was started, OpenStreetMap uh, also was started. Purely because uh, map data was, maps were very hard to get in 2005-2006. All map data used to be the property of companies or uh, the government and they would license it to you at a huge cost. Uh, this was because mapping was very expensive to send teams out into the ground collect data. So OpenStreetMap was uh, started as a way to crowdsource this, just like Wikipedia was to crowdsource encyclopedic data. And it started off as a completely blank map of the world. There was nothing there uh, when it started. Uh, but today it's uh, actually quite rich. So uh, uh, I heard about it in 2008. Uh, very similar to this, there was few folks traveling uh, through India who were contributors in UK and were talking about it. I was interested, happened to travel from Chennai to Bangalore just to hear what it was about. And uh, yeah, they were talking about how maps are always controlled by somebody. It's, it's never people who control the maps. It's government or military throughout history of civilization. And uh, the people who control it have a lot of power to show uh, what, how the world looks, how it is. And, uh, and maps also become legal documents, right? So what you put in and what you put out a map has a lot of implications, uh, real world implications. It starts war, it starts all kinds of things. Uh, so the idea, the, it's also a political in nature that you have to free uh, the map and to have it in control of citizens. So let's have a map which is uh, open, uh, as open as can be. It's free, nobody needs to pay to access it, anyone can contribute, nobody needs special privileges or permission. Uh, and then you open it up to the world and see what happens. And the result is this uh, over 20 years. So it's a really interesting data project, one of the largest collective data repositories, structured data repositories in the world. Uh, and it's all free to use to do anything you want. It's used in a lot of humanitarian uses. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of folks in DevC can uh, talk about uh, how it's being used there. It's used in a lot of commercial applications like Strava. It's used in various ways that we don't know. Uh, and it's become a very strong alternative to Google Maps, which has a very different target segment of, uh, it's a more of an advertising platform, Google Maps. It's not really a map as a map should be for the people. Uh, it's what Google wants to see. It's Google's view of the world. And uh, this is the only big alternative that's there. So hearing this, I was very convinced that the future is in this project. And uh, at that time, the whole country was blank. And uh, I was the one drawing roads and highways uh, uh, 20 years back when nobody knew about it. But over time, uh, there is thousands of people just in India who do this. Uh, it's a huge community globally uh, and it's very interesting. It's the kind of people who have fun exploring and uh, would want to map. Um, and uh, even here for Goa, it's quite cool the kind of uh, details you can see. So even the wetlands and the kazans, uh, which are very unique ecosystems in Goa, these are not represented on other maps. Uh, most people who come here don't even know that Kazans exist and uh, there is something like that. So Kazans are a, a very ancient uh, geoengineering feature of the society here. It's one of the earliest settled places in this entire coast uh, because people figured out how to reclaim uh, saltwater tidal lands from the sea and they built structures around it, dikes uh, and controlled salinity in the soil. And it's huge all over the place. Uh, and most people who come here have no idea it exists. Uh, so, and it's also very threatened because the local knowledge is not there, interest is not there that these are things to be preserved. And these are what make this place very unique. The slopes of this place, the hills all around. You see, all the hills are green. Unlike any other place uh, you go in the country, you'll find construction on the hills. 
because it's prime property. You build nice bungalows and you get a nice view. In Goa, you would not see that. All the hills are green wherever you see around you, and all the settled areas are on the lowlands. So these are all very unique features uh, about it, which you would only see when you start seeing it on the map. Uh, and Google will never show you this kind of view. You never be, you never even know this exists. But if you explore uh, the maps on OpenStreetMap, you start seeing a lot of features that you would otherwise not see, of wetlands or natural features. And the whole, only reason is because people are interested in doing it and putting it on the map. So it's it's a very different world to. Uh, uh, maps that we're used to, like even kids, uh, my own kids, they're all exposed to maps. And for them, they are not exposed to maps, they're exposed to Google Maps. They understand Google Maps, everyone's using it for navigation. Uh, but it's also important for them to know what it means to map, what it means to explore our spaces and uh, control our own map. And then it becomes a very different map of our space. So uh, OpenStreetMap Open is Give it the space for that. It's for all of us to map our own place, like how we see it. Uh, and it's a very simple interface, uh, borrows on Wikipedia model of edit, uh, fully version controlled uh, uh, database. So any object here, what you see here as a map is uh, just a visual representation, one visual representation of the data. And to give you a sense of what that means, so, uh, over here, there's a small checkbox here which says map data. And if I check that, it starts showing a lot of things here. So all of these geometries you see here in blue is what's in the database. And that includes a lot of other things which are not visually represented. It could be trees. Uh, and also the metadata, right? Like this is a mango tree. So when we click on any of the objects here, uh, it tells you what that is. So anything in the database is uh, some kind of geometry. So a node is a point. Then you have lines and areas. And each geometry has a very unique ID, which uh, reference it. And anyone who changes or modifies this, uh, it's tracked by version numbers. So somebody else changing this, adding a new name, moving it, will be tracked in a different version number. Uh, it has a full history of uh, who made it, who, who modified it, by which username, as part of what other changes, and uh, also what tags or metadata was part of this. So it has a check date that this was verified or surveyed on a particular date. This is the name of that uh, point, Rose Cottage, and it's uh, it's a hotel. And it was added half an hour back by a uh, username uh, Cal. And if you, if you click on the username, you get details about the username. You can see all the other changes that the person had made. Uh, and you can see there's only one change. Set. So any other changes will come here. Everyone has a full record of it. Uh, and everything is tracked, so you can always roll back to a previous time. And uh, how you edited this map on the phone is just one way to do it. Uh, all the features though to fully edit the map are available only on the online interface, uh, on the desktop. So if you click edit and you get the map editor here. We'll wait for that to load. But it's a very simple visual editor to draw features. Uh, you can see a reference map for the satellite imagery. You can put mapillary images over there. And then you can draw your geometries and annotate them as you would like. You could get it wrong, no? You could make a mistake. Yeah, yeah, of course. Anyone can make a mistake here. But anyone can, else can also correct it and modify it and update it. So this is the map editor, uh, just like before all the objects are, you can select it, you can change the attributes of it, give it a name, and uh, you can save it and then it's live. That's it. It's Google Maps is getting names wrong because of the centralized model perhaps. They're also, getting names wrong, they can't change it also after that. Yeah, for instance in Google Maps around six months back, everyone would have noticed that names of places, the spellings of places changed. Uh, and nobody has a way to change it. Like, yeah. it. It is what Google Maps shows to you. 
and this is your own place right and yeah. you have your own spelling and you know you know that and someone all. else is telling you what the spelling of the place is uh this is really the basics of open chip app there's more advanced editors and various things you can do with it uh, and very happy to show based on the people are doing something interesting in their projects we can figure out how it works and how it comes together so i have a question like google maps for instance will show different national borders for even india like if you're outside india it shows a different yeah, border and then it shows a different border so how does open street have to address like its political issues and Border, yeah, it's a common question, right, about the boundaries of the country, and uh, there's different boundaries of even this country, uh, which is on, and that's a that's an unsolved issue. Yeah. Uh, but essentially, the focus here is open street map, and the street part of it is very important. That this is a very local map of what you can explore on the ground and survey. And borders of countries is not the most relevant thing for the country. It's there for reference, but Nobody expects to have accurate borders on this. Right, yeah. So it's. But it doesn't change. If I travel somewhere else, it will show me the same map. Yes. Right? Yes. But there are basically it's quite since all the data is open. It's quite easy to you know it's a raw map data, right? So you can take that data and then customize it for what you need for your visual maps, right? So if someone's making a map in China, they can use it to show whatever right. the Chinese government wants. You can see, for example, we've got OpenStreetMap data in that Arun has um, done, which basically is using OpenStreetMap data and basically showing the borders as per well, like environmental. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, right? Oh, so, yeah, yeah. this is a common issue with authorities and government. Right. The first thing they see if they see the site is why is the borders incorrect. So you tell them there is OpenStreetMap India site. You yeah, see that. Yeah, but if they go on the general website. So yeah, but well that's an international one. You go, yeah, yeah, yeah. don't even look at that. Don't you see this, <laughs> and that's worked till now. So that's not been a issue. And a lot of the government websites, like the IMD, the Mausam website, uh, the weather alerts, use OpenStreetMap a lot in their base map, and they put their own data for weather alerts. A lot of government websites use. Uh, what about so in Goa when they make the survey plans to populate and stuff? Do they do their own mapping? Do they use Google Maps? What data do they use? They use their own maps. Yeah. In Bombay, a while ago, we spent a bunch of time trying to take the development plans of Bombay and sort of like digitize them. I saw them. After that was a moment. That was a moment. Right. Yeah. There are some sort of. Right. That would be useful here if you could see this survey number, this whatever. If you could see that in OpenStreetMap. I got so many. Yeah, and there are folks here and Anthony, who's also involved in a lot of civic activism here, are. Dealing with these sort of issues uh, right. because the survey, the legal documents in maps is one thing. What's on the ground is something else. Right. Yeah. And uh, how do you reconcile these differences and what is right? Yeah. So there's, uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So your various satellite imagery sources uh, you can use and. Uh, You also see mapillary, but in the meantime, I think generally, uh, in terms of mapping, nobody had issues. So I think that yeah. concludes the mapping part. Uh, we can uh, we'll use some time while we wait for food also to uh, for anyone to talk about things that they're doing. It's a audience of folks who are doing a whole range of things with maps, uh, and also others who are very curious about what people are doing with maps. uh like in technology space and even otherwise on the ground so it's a nice place to show something there's probably others here who can help you out with something you're looking for uh and uh yeah so we could do like 5 minute for 5 minute presentations with anyone who wants to show something and introduce their work or uh, just share stuff